We all have moments when we crave a bit of adventure, and for thrill-seekers, few experiences compare to the rush of skydiving. Many enthusiasts aim to go higher and higher, seeking the ultimate bird's-eye view of the Earth. But for the most daring, even that isn't enough. Some dream of taking it to the extreme, jumping from space itself. Is this even possible? And what challenges await these brave adventurers? Let's imagine one daredevil skydiver who becomes fascinated by the idea and sets out to make it a reality. To start, our determined skydiver would likely look into past high-altitude jumps. One remarkable feat they would discover is Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner's jump from 39 kilometers or 24 miles above the Earth in 2012. His leap, made from a balloon high above Roswell, New Mexico, saw him step out of a capsule and fall at an astonishing 377 meters per second, or 1,237 feet per second. Baumgartner even broke the sound barrier, becoming the first human to do so without the aid of an engine. His freefall lasted 4 minutes and 20 seconds before he deployed his parachute and landed safely, though the risk was enormous. The intense rotational forces during freefall could have caused him to lose consciousness or worse. Still, real thrill-seekers rarely back down from such challenges, and the idea of skydiving from space would be even more tantalizing. But how could someone make this dream a reality? Current passenger rockets aren't even routinely flying tourists into space yet. Perhaps, like Baumgartner, our skydiver would think of using a balloon for the ascent, only this time much larger and more advanced. However, they'd soon realize that balloons rely on buoyancy, which only works in the presence of air. In space, where there's no air, this approach wouldn't work. Determined, our skydiver continues researching, learning that SpaceX has partnered with Axiom Space to begin sending tourists into orbit starting in 2027. The cost for a ticket? A staggering $55 million. But let's imagine that somehow, our skydiver manages to secure the funds and fast-forward past the months of waiting. Now, they're aboard the International Space Station, getting ready for the ultimate jump. First, they strap on a parachute, an essential for a safe landing. They also don a specially designed spacesuit equipped with oxygen tanks, radiation shielding, and a temperature control system to withstand the extreme heat of re-entry into the atmosphere. All set, the skydiver prepares to leap from the ISS, but this will be nothing like a typical skydive. At around 340 kilometers, or 211 miles, above Earth, about 81 times higher than the average skydiver, the challenge becomes more complex. Unlike jumping from a plane, where the descent is nearly vertical, the skydiver is still orbiting Earth at the same incredible speed as the ISS, about 8 kilometers per second, or 5 miles per second. So when they step away from the station, they'll simply drift into a slightly different orbit. Falling to Earth won't happen immediately. In fact, without significant intervention, they might never fall at all. In theory, with no orbital adjustments, the skydiver could potentially be picked up by the ISS on a future orbit. But let's assume our thrill-seeker stays committed to the fall. To slow down enough to actually descend to Earth, they'd need to push off in the opposite direction of the ISS's motion. Unfortunately, even then, it would take years for them to lose enough speed to re-enter the atmosphere. They'd need an enormous supply of oxygen, food, and water, more than any current spacesuit could carry. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that these supply issues were somehow resolved. Even so, their journey would still be fraught with danger. Space debris hurtling through orbit at speeds of up to 28,000 kilometers per hour, or 17,000 miles per hour, poses a constant threat. A single small fragment could kill them or puncture their suit, leading to a fatal loss of oxygen. Assuming they survive the debris, the next challenge is re-entering Earth's atmosphere. At speeds three times faster than sound, they'll face intense G-forces up to 8 Gs, which could cause them to lose consciousness or worse. Even if they managed to stay conscious, they'd face another peril. 
the extreme heat generated during re-entry. Air molecules crashing into their suit would cause it to heat up dramatically, up to 1,600 degrees Celsius or 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the melting point of steel. Unless the skydiver has a suit capable of withstanding such temperatures, they would burn up long before they ever reach the ground. But let's imagine against all odds that our skydiver safely makes it through re-entry. At just one kilometer, 0.6 miles above the surface, they deploy their parachute, glide to a soft landing, and become a legend, admired by friends, family, and future generations alike for their incredible achievement. Of course, for now, this scenario remains purely hypothetical. But one day, scientists may create the technology necessary to protect extreme sports enthusiasts from all the dangers of a skydive from space. Until then, we can only dream and wonder, what other challenges would await those brave enough to jump from orbit? What do you think? Will space skydiving become a reality soon? Are there other dangers we haven't considered? Leave your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on future adventures. And remember, it's always more fun with friends, so share this with them and let's explore the unknown together.